Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from, well, thankfully a sunny San Diego, seeing as we had rain all weekend. But anyway, as I know, don't complain about the weather in San Diego because nobody has any sympathy for you. <laughs> and today I'm delighted to welcome back, yes, Coach Dan Gordon, who is up the mountains in Big Bear. As I snow. am. What's the powder like? Um, it, it's actually uh, none whatsoever right now. So I'm very, very happy about that. Yeah. So I guess the machines are working overtime up on the um, on the ski uh, ski slopes. Yeah. Yeah. So and uh, and Coach Dan helps people and entrepreneurs who want more clients, but don't feel that great about selling, and and they really want to fix that and embrace selling because after all, at the end of the day, we're all in sales and. Mm. And sales is very important. So we're going to talk today about heart-centric selling. So um, first off, Dan, why is it, do you think, why is it that people sort of feel bad? Like they want to be an entrepreneur, they want to have their own business, they want to be successful, but they don't, they just get so wound up over this notion of selling. Yeah, well, you know, imagine if there was no American Medical Association, there was no licensing for your doctors, that you could wake up in the morning and go, you know what? Today I'm going to be a brain surgeon. Like we would hate doctors, right? Because yeah. doctors would just be these people who kill people, right? And nothing <laughs> else, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. And so the same is true of salespeople. There is zero bar for entry. And because of that, the majority of salespeople aren't really salespeople. They're just awful. You know, and and not that they're awful people. They just don't know how to do what what they do. And the same reference as the doctors, the person who decides to be a brain surgeon might get into it for the best with the best intentions, but end up killing a bunch of people, right? Mm -hmm. And so, fortunately, salespeople are not often put in a situation where it's life or death. Thank thank God. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are often put into a situation where they are relating to someone where they're having a relationship with someone who is struggling mm -hmm. and could be having a tremendous struggle. And they are there to relieve that person's struggle and they just don't know how to do it. Yeah. And, and, right. and I would say though, um, and Dan, and then obviously part of the, part of the issue is that the salesperson goes in feeling number one, that obviously they don't want to be doing this. They don't like mm -hmm. what they're doing. They're not confident about what they're doing. And yeah. unfortunately, all of this is easily transmitted to the person on the other side. Right. You know, most people are in sales because they couldn't do anything else or they couldn't get in anything else. Or they, you know, they, they graduated with a degree in marketing and mm -hmm. they got their first job in marketing and whoops, they're doing sales. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, wait a second, <laughs> what about all that, all that money I spent on my degree. Mm -hmm. And so, they're a little frustrated right off the bat because they don't want to be there, like you say. Mm -hmm. And so that just adds to a sense of um, sort of uh, un unintentional self-centric thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Unintentional self-centric thinking. They don't wake up in the morning and go, I'm just going to think about my myself. But they're a little frustrated because they don't want to be there or they don't know what they're doing or they've gotten sales training mm -hmm. from someone who just tells them to focus on customer pain points. And these are not ways of really opening up a relationship with, mm -hmm. with someone. It, look, in the same way, if you're dating and you really want to get married and your whole focus is on getting married, not getting to know the other person, mm -hmm. just getting married, it's like you're going to fail. And you yeah. may get married, but it's not going to be a very satisfying relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's probably going to be no renewal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and a rather, a rather ugly disengagement. But uh, <laughs> yeah. And so how should, how can people reorient their thinking so that they can mm. embrace the whole idea of being of service, of problem solving, of doing something that actually is very, very noble and very, very much needed. So how can you switch that mindset? That's a that's a really great question. And I and I appreciate this conversation, John, because most people who talk to me about sales, they just want like tips and tricks and Jedi mind tricks. And mm -hmm. how do I get, you know, how do I push past somebody's resistance? And it's it's none of that. And again, if you uh, if you shift your thinking to relationships, like dating 
relationships, when you mm -hmm. met your partner, when you were dating, when, you know, what worked and what didn't, that's the beginning. The thing that I started doing, and look, I am, I'm not a natural born salesperson. I don't know many people that, that are, I used to, I used to hyperventilate before and after, and sometimes during sales meetings. And the the reason is is because I knew internally that I was this was not me like I I didn't like the person I was being, and so what I learned to do is I learned to distract myself from my own thoughts, and that's the struggle that you you who are listening right now are having with your sales. You go into a sales situation thinking, how am I going to sell my product or service, and when you think that way, already you failed to some degree. Mm -hmm. because the person on the other side of the table is sensing that they know that they're not that, that you're not there for them. So you need to distract yourself from those self-centric thinking. And that's investing yourself in the person that you're talking to yeah. Just learn everything that you can about them, not to sell them, but to relieve them of the struggle. And my focus, what I learned to do in this dis distraction was to just focus on, I want to leave them in a much better position than how I found them, mm -hmm. right? So if I walk away and they have some solutions to their problems that they didn't have before we met, then I've succeeded. Yeah, And that's, that's the kind of thinking that allows me to betray those self-centered thoughts. Mm -hmm. and, and part of it is, as you said, is when you start off from, from a position of not feeling very good about what you're doing, not yeah. feeling very confident about what you're doing, as you said, the person who you're engaging with or the people who you're engaging, it can sense that. And they are, they are already a little defensive because let's face it, that's just a natural <laughs> reaction that we have when we, uh, when we know we're in a sales call, we're on the it receiving be, end. Yeah. Uh, we're already a little defensive. So therefore, if you are not feeling confident, if you're not coming from a, a point of wanting to learn and, and engage and really understand, I mean, that's just, that's just too, you know, immovable. Yeah, too strict. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, and, and, and I'd like to address that, Sean, if mm -hmm. I may. Because what you said is when you go into a sales situation, it's already something of a confrontational type of relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to push back a little bit on that because mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that way. The reason it's a, it seems to be a confrontational relationship is because the person that you're selling, they believe that you're going to try to talk them into something that they don't want. Yep. So their natural human defense mechanisms, their survival mechanisms are fired up. And this, this has to do with how human beings sur survived a couple million years ago. Everything was about survival. And so when somebody is asking you to do something or to spend money, your survival instinct kicks into gear and you start believing that your life is in danger. Mm. Like that is literally what's going on inside of you. Your heart starts beating faster. Your eyes dilate. you get flushed with adrenaline. Like all of these signals start happening. It tells your body you're in danger. So naturally, naturally you're going to um, have a certain amount of resistance and you're going to create that, that kind of, that kind of relationship. Mm. Now, as a salesperson going into a sale, you have to know that that's what's going on with your prospect. And because of that, it's up to you to ease that reaction that they're having, right? To connect with them on a on an authentic human level, so they don't feel like you're in it for just your yourself, and that will dial down the defense mechanism that they're mm -hmm. that they're experiencing. And I think sometimes also is 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 not is forgetting to put yourself in the place of the of the buyer or the buyer yeah. and. and understanding that there's a lot of things going on. Number one, yes, they need to make a good decision for their company, but they also have their own personal agenda as well, not in a bad way, in a good way. Because mm -hmm. let's face it, when you purchase something, especially in, in B2B sales, right? In B2C, like if I go over to, to Best Buy or whatever and buy the latest super duper 300 inch tv screen and bring it home <laughs> what's the worst that's going to happen to me is my wife's going to hit me with it take, <laughs> take it back and buy a new dryer right, right? because that's what we really need uh, uh 
so that's big. But in B2B, when I make a purchasing decision, it can be career enhancing. If it works out, it can be career limiting. So there's a lot of personal stress involved as well. And as sure. a salesperson, that's part of what you need to alleviate. Mm, right. And so like take your product, for example, Pipeliner, mm. right? You have a, a terrific CRM and you know it's great and you know it has benefits and qualities that are far above most of the CRMs out there. I would even say all of them, like it's a great product. Mm -hmm. Now, the person on the other side of the table or the other side of the screen doesn't know that. Yep. And so if you approach them with features and benefits, well here, let me convince you why it's great. You're not helping mm -hmm. because what they're afraid of is not, not getting the correct features and benefits. What they're afraid of is being talked into something that's going to ultimately not work for, for them. Yeah. And what they're really afraid of is not spending the money, but that sense of looking in the mirror and going, Ugh, I got mm -hmm. talked into something. I got <laughs> tricked, right? I am so stupid. <laughs> and that's what people really fear, that mm -hmm. sense of how they'll beat themselves up if mm -hmm. they make a mistake. Yeah. And when you bring that into a sale, now the conversation is a lot different because now you're dealing with that aspect of their struggle, not the money, not the things they say, but what's really going on for them mm -hmm. on a deep emotional level. No, and uh, absolutely. And I think a lot of it goes back to, and I hate to bring the authenticity word up <laughs> again, because it's been, so, it's been so overused right. um, lately, but, but the, you have to be, you have to be authentic in order to do what you just said, right. In order to be yeah. able to alleviate the, their, their, their concerns in order to be able to make them feel like you do have their best interests at heart. And you really, really want to understand what's going on. And a lot of the time that means you have to, you have to have a conversation, but you have to listen and validate and really go deeper on what they're mm. saying. Instead of you thinking, I need to move this on to my next step. Yeah. And look, uh, uh, Rosalind and I are looking for uh, a new house. And so we've been doing, you know, a lot of home shopping. We've interacted with a lot of different realtors. And it's really been a shame at how, how little they practice this, how little mm. the, realtor, the realtors care about it. Like it, classic example, we, we go into this house. It's a decent house, <clears throat> pardon me, but it's next door to a apartment complex and you don't want to live next to an apartment yeah. complex for obvious reasons. <laughs> and so we say this, you know, just offhandedly mm -hmm. to the realtor and he, and he says, Oh, but they're very quiet. <laughs> now, <laughs> come on. Exactly. Come on. All of them, all of them. All of them right. <laughs> He's interviewed them. They're all, they've all taken a vow of silence. You know, until <laughs> you're living, you're living next door to right, yeah. Trappist monks. <laughs> sure. Right. Yeah. So, you know, now, now let's say he had said to us, oh, I really understand that. Look, I don't like living next to a lot of noise. So, um, so you really do have to think about this. This might not be the right house for you. I, I will say though, that that's why this house is a hundred thousand dollars less expensive yeah. than the house across the street. Mm -hmm. That's not next to it. So you, you're going to have to balance one against the other. Now I can tell you that I've been here for six weeks trying to sell this house and I haven't heard you know, smoke on the water or, uh, you know, a lot of noise coming out of there. It's been fairly quiet. So, I mean, that's been my experience, but I'm, I'm not here 24 seven. You really got to make your own choice. Now, mm -hmm. if he had said that, we would have had a lot more faith in him. We, we would have believed him when he said, yeah, I've been here and I haven't heard a lot of noise. Like that would have been really helpful instead of just taking the thing that we were concerned about and denying it. Mm. And that is a classic mistake of most salespeople, right? They listen to what their prospect is saying, but only to deny them instead of really hear them and react to their concerns. And I, and I think some of that again comes back to the focus on, uh, it's like they're the focus. They're so hung up on these objections. I know they're going to ask about the conflict. Yeah. I know they're going to ask that. So when it comes up, it's just, I'm just going to move past it. I'm going to as fast as I can. And, and therefore throughout that whole conversation you're, you were having with the realtor, they're probably waiting for that moment in their head, they're going at some stage, they're going to ask about the complex instead of, instead of it would have even been better if they even upfront just said, 
realize it's beside a, a complex that may not be something you're interested in, but here, let me give you my thoughts on it. Instead mm -hmm. of sort of sitting there the whole time tense, knowing that you're going to ask. Yeah. And and think about this too. If you're a realtor, eh, really for, for anybody. Yeah. Uh, if we walked into a house, obviously I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, yeah. If if we walked into a house and the realtor said, hey, can I tell you a couple things I don't like about this place and a bunch of things that I do? Would that be mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Right? And he said, okay, look, the, this, this, this water heater, it's on its last leg. Like you're going to need a new one, yeah. right? Yeah. Or the paint, it, you know, it looks like it was put up in the Eisenhower administration, <laughs> right? It's awful. Mm -hmm. However, right, this, this, and this. Yeah. Now we're trusting him more because he he or she would feel like they're more on our side, like they're telling us things that that we don't like about it. Mm. And and that's the that's the thing. If you approach your prospects with an open heart, meaning what's going on for them, what are they struggling with? And you know, how, how long have they been looking just today? You know, like if we walked in and they said, wow, it looks like you've been out, you know, all day driving around in L.A. traffic. You, <laughs> you, you want some water or something? Like, you know, just why don't you just take a seat for a while and relax? You know? Exactly. Do you need a therapist for a moment? Right. But instead, <laughs> instead, John, what happens is we walk in, they shove a clipboard in our face and say, sign in, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and so what they're saying is, hey, I want to get your information. So if I can't sell you this house, I can sell you some other house. Yeah. And again, that's all about them. Yeah. And, and I think the another part, and it's I mean, it's good using, and we're not picking on realtors. No, 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 not at all. I know some fantastic ones uh, who are, who, you know, who would excel selling anything because they're just yeah. great people. But uh, seeing as we're on realtor, we're using yeah. realtors as an, ex as an example right now is um, there's the other part, too, is sometimes you, you've probably seen this yourself. Maybe you wander into an open house and maybe you heard about it quickly. So maybe you're in your sweat gear or whatever, you know, you can yeah. maybe you borrowed, you know, you have you borrowed some car and it doesn't look and you walk in and they immediately give you that. Oh, I know you can't afford this. You're just yeah. looking right. But you may actually have like two million bucks in your back pocket for all they sure. know. Uh, and I think that's also the part. And then they may like fawn all over the guy who comes in and they're being dressed mm -hmm. to the nines who may not have any money to buy. But this is having these preconceived notions you need to get rid of because you haven't talked to or understood the person yet. Yeah. And and that's at the heart of what we're of what we're talking about here. What is going on for the person that you're talking to? Invest yourself in the mind of the other person. Invest yourself wholly and completely in what's going on for them. It's just, it's a wonderful distraction from worrying about whether or not you're going to close a deal. Yeah. And when you're distracted from that and you're talking about them and you're invested in them and learning more about them, they feel that. And and even if you don't sell that house or that house to, to anyone in particular, it's a practice. Mm. And it's a practice that's going to pay off. It's like practicing the piano. Like you can't sit down at a piano if you've never played and play like Elton John. It's just mm. not going to happen. Yeah. And you, but if you practice, if you practice over and over again, if you just do the basics, eventually it just starts to, to take hold. I remember when things really shifted for me. And what happened is people started saying to, to me, it was really good to meet you. And I thought, wow, that's, you know, now we're headed somewhere. Yeah. Now, to, to be clear, I wasn't closing more, more, more deals then, but it was an indication that I was getting into people's hearts and I was focused on them and I was creating that, that relationship, which then became the foundation for how I began to sell moving forward. Yeah. And not to get all, you know, hippie about this, but I Please, mean, the yeah, yeah. but no, but what you're just saying there as you are putting out some good energy into the universe, right? Mm -hmm. but, but even more and and to on practical terms, your people are leaving you with a good feeling so that maybe they bump into someone or somebody mm -hmm. says, I have this need. And you go, well, you know, I talked to Dan. Dan's a great guy. You should have a chat with Dan. Maybe Dan will be the right fit for you. Maybe won't, but he's a great guy. Have a chat with him. Now, if you don't leave somebody with, with a good feeling or if people doesn't feel like you're authentic and genuine, they're never going to do that. Yeah. And you know what you made me think of is I'm, I, um, 
when I'm out at a restaurant and I see a police officer, a group of police officers, um, I usually buy them their dinner. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I do that is because I want these peace officers to feel really good about right. the people out there, right? Because they have a, a very hard job. And I know that right now we're not too crazy about police officers. A lot of people are. And look, they're, you know, they're, 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 there's bad cops, just like there's bad realtors. Exactly. Uh, and if you, and the reason I do that is because I want to invest in them. I want to invest in their emotions. And this is really what we're, what we're talking about is investing in how people feel and relate and react. And I can tell you that sales is really the ultimate personal development tool mm. that in sales, you're going to learn more about yourself than you would in therapy in a, like in a Tony Robbins class and in, in, in anything. And the reason is, is that when you're selling, Anything that you struggle with is put right in front of your face. Like it's right up in your grill. Mm -hmm. You know, what you think about yourself, what you think about your product, what you think about value, how you express value, how you handle it when people are resistant. All of these very human experiences are put in front of your face and they're there for you to gently ease back instead of pushing back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I'm absolutely. And I mean, it, it, in some ways, what you just described is the ultimate journey of self aware of self awareness. Yeah. So in yeah. fact, even if you don't end up staying in sales, if you do it the way we're talking about and the way Dan's talking about here, the benefits to you as you do anything else in your life are going to be huge because, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're selling all of the time. And, and even if your title is in sales, you know, you really are in sales, regardless of, of what you do. You know, and and there's and there's one other thing I'm, I'm going to talk about. Like mm -hmm. when people ask me, okay, what do I do to sell to sell better? I usually start by asking them, how much sleep are you getting? And like, wait, mm -hmm. what? You know, that, right? And the the thing is that most entrepreneurs do not get enough sleep, and most entrepreneurs uh, get have more stress than the average person. And most entrepreneurs really struggle with being productive. Mm -hmm. And I have tried a lot of different modalities to increase this, to get more rest, to get to be more productive, to reduce my, my stress. I tried meditating, which I failed <laughs> at, uh, micro dosing. Like I've tried just about everything. I found this product called New Calm, which is it, it, it utilizes something called binaural beats. And binaural beats is just essentially music. It is audio waveforms that exist underneath uh, music. And so mm -hmm. it, it's an app on my phone. I put it on. Um, in the morning, I listen to it. I listen to it this, this morning. And it has changed so many aspects of how I show up in my business. I did a little research on this company. It turns out over 50 Professional sports teams use Newcom, um, the U.S. Department of Defense, Special Forces, the Navy, the Air Force, uh, uh, pilots use this. And it's all had this huge effect on easing people's stress, on getting them to sleep better, on making them feel just more productive. Mm -hmm. So I gave this company a call. I met the CEO, Jim Poole, and I said, Jim, I want to give away some new calm so people can experience it. And so what he did is he gave me a week of free new calm that I can give people. And to get it, and I really urge you to do this, just text the word calm, C-A-L-M, to this number, 213-409-8366. 213-409-8366 and text the word CALM, C-A-L-M. And really, it's you put on your headset, you put on the music, and you just say bye-bye to the world. It right. takes you on a journey. It's, it's phenomenal. It, this is foundational to what every entrepreneur, what every salesperson needs a sense of ease, a sense of calm, yeah. a, a mm -hmm. sense of productivity. And I haven't found anything that's as productive and easy as this. So last time, text the word CALM, C-A-L-M, to 213-409-8366 and get a week's worth of new CALM.
Fantastic. And it'll, uh, you know, we'll include that there and you can saw it was on the screen as well. And uh, yeah, I, I think I, I think we have to move beyond, Dan, just in, in close, and we have to move beyond this idea that stress and and not sleeping and working yeah. all year, that this is because so, it's such it, it has been traditionally celebrated. That's how you identify <laughs> a high achiever. Wow. Right. They're always stressed. They never sleep. They're always on the go. And then, you know, one day they keel over. Um, but, um, you know, we have to get away from that. And we also have to get away from, as I often advise people is look at your morning routine. Like, what is your morning routine? Is it you wake up and you check your social media? Well, you know what that does. You see, oh, look, Dan's standing beside his Lamborghini. Uh, oh, right. my life is <laughs> Dan's doing so much better. And in fact, you were just standing beside somebody else's Lamborghini, but I don't right. know. Or or you immediately go on the news and, and you know, it doesn't matter where mm. you sit on the political spectrum. The news is not there to inform you. It's there to provoke you. Yes. So, so you can have a double whammy. You can wake up going, darn, Dan's doing so much better than me. I'm a loser. And oh, all these horrible things are happening in the world. Arr. And now what a great way to start your day. So now mm. you're just like, really all the you're just negative stuff running around in your head. So this sounds fantastic. So um, listen, thanks again, Dan. Before you go, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Yeah. So first of all, if you want to get in touch with uh, with me, it's really easy. Just go on to uh, LinkedIn and do a search for Coach Dan Gordon. I'll pop right up. Um, you can also, look, if you want to book a 15-minute call with me, there's two things I can guarantee. One, at the end of the call, you won't be a client because I'm not going to try to make you a client. Uh, and two, you're going to get at least $10,000 worth of advice because it's there is something that you're struggling with that all entrepreneurs struggle with. And I'm going to tell you what it is, but I'm only going to tell you on the call because <laughs> it's personal. Yeah. And to and to book a call with, with me, just text the word help, like help me, Coach Dan. Text help, H-E-L-P to that same number, 213-409-8366, 213-409-8366, and text help, H-E-L-P. Yeah. And you know, my my focus and drive is around assisting entrepreneurs in living their best life and being their best selves. Because when you are selling better, you feel better, there's more money coming in, there's less concern, you have better relationships, have have better families, and kids don't end up, you know, bullying and shooting up schools and things like that. It just mm -hmm. makes for a better world. Like entrepreneurs mm -hmm. are the best thing we have going. All of y'all, you're yeah. you're hardworking, you're dedicated, and you're committed to living your best life. Mm -hmm. And I only want to help you do that. And by the way, if you're a salesperson in an organization, you don't have to not necessarily be an entrepreneur because we believe salespeople yeah. are entrepreneurs anyway. Yes. Because you're the only ones in the organization whose compensation is variable the way it is. You have to literally build your book of business. It's So we call them salespreneurs and it's, it applies yeah. exactly the same way. So don't think just because you are not don't own your own business that you're not an entrepreneur because in many ways you are. And 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 I'll, and I'll say this too. I had the uh, the unique opportunity of uh, meeting John and being on a panel um, for uh, Pipeliner. And man, the people in the room were just outstanding. And I've I've learned a lot about your product, uh, about the CRM. And I just I urge everybody to check it out. It you you cannot exist with. Uh, post-it notes on the side of your screen or keeping things in your memory or using a, you know, a, like just a spreadsheet CRM. It, it has to be automated. It has to be something that frees up your, your time and makes you more productive. And Pipeliner does that and so much more. And less stressed. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, thanks again, Dan. Thank you for watching, listening. Uh, we'll see you all again very soon. Thank you.